Driver's License Manual State of Mississippi Department of Public Safety Driver Service Bureau Post Office Box 958 Jackson, Mississippi, 39205 www.dps.ms.gov Prices and laws are subject to change between publications. The Driver Service Bureau reserves the right to overrule any information obtained from this manual, however, all efforts are made to keep information accurate. All versions of this manual are revised upon publication. Tate Reeves Governor of the State of Mississippi Operating a vehicle is an exciting privilege that should be taken seriously. Learning and following the rules of the road are the best ways to protect yourself and those around you from harm while traveling the roadways of our great state. Each year, thousands of motorists are injured or lose their lives. Distracted driving is one of the leading causes of accidents. Like I tell my girls as I teach them to drive, your focus should be on the road, do not text and drive. Keep yourself and others safe by learning, understanding, and obeying the traffic laws outlined in this manual. Make certain that you and your passengers buckle up your seat belts every time you travel in a motor vehicle. Seat belts have proven to save lives. Buckle up, it is the law. Also, take special care in school zones and when sharing the road with bicyclists. I wish you the best as you prepare to become a licensed, responsible driver. The Mississippi Department of Public Safety and the Mississippi Highway Safety Patrol strive for courtesy, service, and safety, and stand ready to assist you in any way. Sean Tyndall Mississippi Department of Public Safety Commissioner Congratulations on taking the first step towards becoming a licensed driver in Mississippi. In this manual, you will find the rules that govern the operation of motor vehicles on our roadways. This manual will also help you prepare for the required examination. As a licensed driver, you will be able to travel freely and enjoy our great state and nation. However, driving is a privilege and should be taken very seriously. Lives are saved each day when drivers follow the rules of the road and practice safe driving habits. We encourage you to learn and obey the rules outlined in this manual. The Mississippi Department of Public Safety and the Mississippi Highway Patrol are committed to making your driving experience as safe as possible. We are here to assist if you have trouble on the roadways. If you need additional information, please visit our website at www.dps.ms.gov. License Requirements 7 Types of Licenses and Permits 9 Application Requirements 12 The Examination 13 Glossary 14 Required Equipment 15 Pavement Marking 16 Traffic Signs and Signals 18 Railroad Crossings 28 Rules of the Road and Safe Driving 30 Sharing the Road with Bicycle 60 Required Vehicle Documentation 62 Proof of Insurance and Safety Responsibility 63 Driving Under the Influence and Implied Consent 64 License Suspension, Revocation, and Reinstatement 67 Class D Commercial Driver's License Information 69 Appendix A, Quick Reference, License Slash Permit Requirements 74. Appendix B, Sample Test Questions, Slash Regular Driver's License 75. Appendix C, Sample Test Questions, Slash Class D Commercial Driver's License 77. Appendix D, Organ Donation 78. Appendix E, The Natchez Trace 79. Appendix F, Energy Conservation 80. License Requirements Under the laws of Mississippi, to operate any motor vehicle, except road and farm equipment, on streets or highways, you must have a valid driver's license or learner's permit. Driving without a valid driver's license or learner's permit is illegal, even if you are accompanied by a parent or licensed driver. You are exempted from having a Mississippi driver's license if any of the following is true. You are operating any vehicle belonging to a branch of the United States Armed Services. 
you are a non-resident over the age of 16, 16, and have in your possession a valid driver's license issued to you by the proper authorities in your home state or home country. You are operating any road machine, farm tractor, or farm equipment temporarily on streets or highways. The law prevents you from being issued a license in Mississippi if any of the following is true. You have not reached the age of 16, 16, years, and you have not held a learner's permit for one. 1. Year without certain convictions. You are under 18, 18, years old, and do not provide proper documentation of your enrollment in school. You have not passed the written driver's examina tie-in or provided an affidavit whereby a parent, teacher, or guardian has certified that he or she has witnessed you operate a motor vehicle for at least 50, 50, hours. Your license has been revoked or suspended. You are habitually intoxicated or are addicted to the use of narcotics. You have a physical or mental condition income potable with safe driving. You have been adjudged insane. If you move to Mississippi, you must obtain a Mississippi driver's license within 60, 60 days. You must obtain a Mississippi license plate, tag, within 30, 30 days. When you apply for a Mississippi driver's license, you must surrender all out-of-state licenses. If your out-of-state license has been lost, you must obtain an affidavit of inability to surrender form from the driver's license office. Your signature must be notarized on this form. Your driving record in other states will be checked before a Mississippi license is issued. If you have a valid driver's license from another state, the Computerized exam and affidavit waiving the road test may be waived. You must pass a vision screening. If your out-of-state license has been expired over 30, 30 days, you must take the computerized exam. All out-of-state driver's license and ID card applications require the following. Certified state-issued birth certificate. Original social security card or printout from the social. Security Office 2. 2. Proofs of Residency Non-resident military personnel and their families are allowed to drive in Mississippi, provided they hold a valid driver's license from another state. Similarly, out-of-state college students are allowed to drive in Mississippi with their out-of-state license. The same policy applies to auto license plates. Military personnel and college students can renew or replace their driver's license or identification card. Online. Go to www.dps.ms.gov for more information. What if my license expires while I am out of state due to military service? If you are out of state due to military service at the time your valid license expires, you may renew the license at any time within 90, 90, days of being discharged from military service or upon returning to the state. You must provide proof of your military service and of your discharge or return to the state by affidavit. A delinquent fee is not required. An examination is not required unless the Department of Public Safety has reason to believe the licensee is no longer eligible to receive a license. For any licensed driver who qualifies for a license renewal, the license may be renewed up to six, six months prior to the expiration date. Non-citizen licenses and identification cards. If you are a non-citizen, you must meet all requirements for a driver's license or identification card, except for providing a social security number. To obtain a regular driver's license, you must have a permanent resident-slash-green card status with the Immigration-slash-Homeland Security Department or valid immigration papers indicating your legally permitted length of stay in the United States. For original licenses or identification Cards you must present Original permanent resident card No photocopies allowed Or Valid immigration papers, plus passport. Or I-94 plus passport. And Birth certificate, translated by a university, 2, 2, proofs of residency. 
For renewals, you must present, original permanent resident card, no photocopies allowed. Or. Valid immigration papers, plus passport. Or. I-94 plus passport. And. Driver's license or identification card. Types of licenses and permits. The temporary learner's permit is for high school students at least 14, 14 years old who are currently enrolled in an approved high school driver education course. Your driver education instructor must furnish proof that you are presently enrolled in an approved driver education program. Your temporary permit is restricted in 2 M. Portant ways. It is valid only while you are enrolled in an approved driver education course. It allows you to drive only a driver EDU CAT ion vehicle while accompanied by your driver education instructor. Upon turning age 15, 15, you may go to a driver's license station and upgrade to a regular learner's permit. Note, a good driver education program can be very beneficial. Statistics have shown that drive heirs who complete driver education courses are far less likely to be involved in accidents. Additionally, many insurance companies set lower rates for drivers who have participated in an approved driver education course. You must be at least 15, 15 years old to AP apply for a regular learner's permit. You must hold the learner's permit for one, one year before you can upgrade to a regular driver's license. If you turn 17, 17 before you have held the learner's permit for one, one year, you are eligible to apply for a regular license. The regular learner's permit is valid for two, two, years. It entitles you to drive a motor vehicle when accompanied by a licensed driver aged 21, 21, years or older who is physically occupying the seat next to you. You must pass the same computerized exam required for a regular driver's license to be eligible for a regular learner's permit. A Class D license is required only when you are operating a vehicle commercially and the VEHI CLE is under 26,000 pounds GVWR. You do not need a commercial license to drive a pickup truck, regardless of what the truck is used for, unless you are transporting hazardous materi ALS in an amount that requires a placard. You must be at least 21, 21 years old before you are eligible for a license to drive a school bus. If you require some type of aid or special equip, mint, such as eyeglasses, in order to pass the exam for a license or permit, then your license will be restricted accordingly. To operate a motor-driven cycle, you must obtain a motorcycle endorsement to go along with your driver's license. To receive the motorcycle endorsement, you must complete a computerized test on the opera tie-in of a motorcycle and a skills test. You may obtain a Mississippi Motorcycle Operator's Manual from the nearest driver's license station. When applying for a motorcycle endorsement, advise the examiner so that the proper test will be administered. If you hold an out-of-state license, which is valid for the operation of motorcycles, the computerized and skills tests may be waived. Note, under Sector 63-7-64, no person shall operate or ride upon any motorcycle or motor scooter upon the public roads or highways of the state unless such person is wearing on his or her head a crash helmet that complies with minimum guidelines established by the National Highway Traffic Administration pursuant to Federal Motor Vehicle Safety Standard No. 218, 49 CFR 571.218. You are eligible for a class or regular driver's license if you provide all required document tie-in and pass the written examination, pass the vision examination. Provide an affidavit whereby a parent, teacher, or guardian has certified that he or she has witnessed you operate a motor vehicle for at least 50, 50 hours and attest to your proficiency in the proper and safe operation of a motor vehicle. Meet the physical requirements and you have reached the age of 16, 16 years, and have held a learner's permit for 1, 1 year. Additionally, whether or not you have been convict of certain violations will determine eligible ITY for a regular driver's license. Or, you have reached the age of 17, 17 years or older, 
regardless of previous permits or licenses held. Or You have held an out-of-state driver's license for at least six, six months. Application Requirements To obtain a license of any type, you must complete an application form furnished by the Department of Public Safety. Your examiner will not accept the application if it has been soiled, mutilated, or folded improperly. The completed application must contain your full name, date of birth, home address, and social security number, a physical description and a brief history of your physical and mental condition information about your driving experience and record. If you are 18, 18 years old or older and are applying for an original license, you must show two, two pieces of documentation to prove you live in this state. If you are under 21, 21 years old, you may use documentation for your parents' residence. Each proof of residency must contain a physical address. No post office box numbers will be accepted. Acceptable proofs of residency include, but are not limited to, items such as, electric bill, water bill, or bank statement, no blank checks, lease or rent agreement or mortgage papers, notarized letter from employer stating address of applicant and including employer's telephone number. Mississippi driver's license of parent or guardian, and, if applicant under 21, 21, years of age, etc. If you are under 18, 18, years old, you must provide proof of your enrollment in school. Request a certification of attendance form from your school. This form must not be over 30, 30, days old. If you are homeschooled, obtain a blank certification of attendance from a school or superintendent of education. Your parents' notarized signature must be on this form. If you are under 18, 18, years old, and are married, you may show a marriage license instead of a school certification of attendance. 2. 2. Proofs of identification are required before a license or permit can be issued. You must provide your social security card. If you no longer have your social security card, you must obtain a new one. And you must provide a certified birth certificate issued by your state of birth. If you currently hold a driver's license from another state, you must also provide the out-of-state license or a lost license affidavit. You must sign your application after completing it. If you make a false statement on the applicant tie-in, your driving privileges may be suspended. If you are under 17, 17 years old, your application for a permit or license must include the signature of both of your parents, if both are living, and both have legal custody of you. If both parents are not living or do not have legal custody of you, your application must include the signature of your legal guardian or your employer. If you do not have a custodial parent, legal guardian, or employer, your application must be signed by a responsible adult who is willing to assume the obligations imposed on them by law. Before you can be issued an original Mississippi driver's license, you must meet three, three, requirements. Pass the vision exam, pass the computerized exam, and in lieu of a skills exam provide the affidavit required by Sector 63-1-33, 7, from a parent, teacher, or guardian certifying that he or she has witnessed you operate a motor vehicle for at least 50, 50, hours and attesting to your proficiency in the proper and safe operation of a motor vehicle. Each is described below. The exams are designed to answer the following questions. Do you know the Mississippi traffic laws and the rules of safe driving? Can you read, understand, and follow traffic signs and signals? Are you a safe and skillful driver? Do you understand and have the proper attitude toward the rights of pedestrians and other drivers? Do you understand how to keep your vehicle in safe condition? Are you physically and mentally capable of driving safely? The computerized exam is based on the Information in this manual. It especially focuses on Mississippi traffic laws, safe driving rules, and driver's license requirements. To prepare for the exam, study this manual carefully. Your eyes will be checked to make sure you see well enough to drive safely. Glossary 
business or residential district, any place where most of the land along the road for 300, 300 feet or more is used for houses or places of business. Computerized exam, a multiple choice question test, you must pass as one of the requirements for a Mississippi driver's license. Highway, every roadway or place of travel, including the streets of municipalities. Intersection, the place where roads come together or cross. The crosswalks are counted as part of the intersection. Motor vehicle, an automobile, motorcycle, or other kind of vehicle which is run by an engine or motor in the vehicle itself, except vehicles on rails, electric bicycles, golf carts, and low-speed vehicles. Non-resident, any person who does not live in Mississippi. Operator, any person who is driving a motor vehicle on the highway. Right-of-way, the privilege of the immediate use of the highway. School bus, every vehicle owned by a public or governmental agency, or privately owned and operated for compensation, for the transportation of children to and from school. Stop, complete cessation of movement. Traffic, pedestrians, ridden or herded animals, vehicles, streetcars, and other conveyances, either singularly or together, while using any highway for the purpose of travel. Your vehicle must be equipped as follows. Brakes, your vehicle must have a foot brake and a parking brake. The foot brake must be strong enough to stop the vehicle in 30, 30 feet at a speed of 20, 20 miles per hour. The parking brake must be strong enough to stop the vehicle in 55, 55 feet at the same speed. Horn, your vehicle must have a horn which can be heard 200, 200 feet away. It is against the law to have any siren or exhaust or spark whistle on a vehicle. Noise-making devices are illegal. Lights, your vehicle must have two, two, headlights, one, one, for a motorcycle, and a taillight. The lights must meet the following standards. With your headlights, you should be able to see a person 200, 200 feet ahead un. Your good weather conditions at night. The tail light on your vehicle must be red and must be visible 500, 500 feet behind you. In addition to two, two headlights, your vehicle may have no more than one, one spotlight and no more than three, three auxiliary lights. It is against the law for any of these lights to be either red or blue, and at no time should you have more than four, four lights, not including headlights, burning at once. Muffler the muffler on your vehicle must be in good working order and must operate constantly. Straight, gutted, Hollywood, glass-packed, or any other types of mufflers which allow excessive noise or smoke are illegal. Rearview mirror, Mississippi law does not require you to have a rearview mirror, but it is recommended for you to have one. If you drive a truck with a body that blocks your view of the road behind, you are required by law to have an outside rearview mirror. Tires, your tires must be properly inflated, have good tread, and be free of brakes, cuts, and decay. Safety tip, before driving, use a tire pressure gauge to check tire pressure. Your tire pressure should match the recommended pounds per square inch, PSI, located in the vehicle owner's manual or the driver's side door jam of the vehicle. If your PSI is above the recommended number, let air out until it matches. If below, add air until the amount is correct. Have a tire professional help you if necessary. Once a month, or before any long road trip, check your tires for wear and damage problems. To check. For appropriate tire tread, use the penny test. Take a penny and hold Abraham Lincoln's body between your thumb and forefinger. Select a point on your tire where the tread appears to be lowest and place Lincoln's head into one of the grooves. If any part of Lincoln's head is covered by the tread, you're driving with a safe amount of tread. If the tread gets below that, your car's ability to grip the road in adverse conditions is greatly reduced. Windshield Wipers For safe driving under poor weather conditions, you must have windshield wipers that work. Pavement Markings The pavement on all main highways is marked to help you drive safely. These markings include center lines, lane lines, and directional arrows. 
Their placement depends upon the type of highway and the particular traffic conditions. You must observe and comply with these markings at all times. A broken yellow line separates traffic lanes that move in the opposite directions. Crossing into the Oncom ING lane is permissible only for passing and only when it is safe to pass. A broken white line means travel in the same direction is permitted on both sides of the line. A vehicle may cross the line to change lanes when it is safe to do so. A broken yellow line next to a solid yellow line SEPA rates traffic lanes that move in opposite direct tie-ins. If the broken line is closest to your lane, you may pass with caution. If the solid line is closest to your lane, passing is forbidden next to the solid line. A double, solid yellow line separates travel lanes moving in opposite directions. Passing from either side of a double yellow line is prohibited. A single, solid white line means travel in the same direction is permitted on both sides of the line. Crossing a single white line is discouraged. A double, solid white line means travel in the same direction is permit on both sides of the line. Crossing a double white line is prohibited. Pavement arrows mark the directions of traffic movement. When you approach intersections marked by directional arrows, look for the arrow that marks the lane you want to follow. If you get in the wrong lane, keep going in that lane until it is safe to turn off and get back on the correct street or highway. An arrow pointing to the left means you must turn left if you travel in this lane. A straight arrow means you must continue straight if you travel in this lane. An arrow pointing to the Right means you must turn right if you travel in this lane. A two-headed arrow that points both straight and to the left means that you may continue straight or turn to the left if you travel in this lane. A two-headed arrow that points both straight and to the right means that you may continue straight or turn to the right if you travel in this lane. The center lane above is painted to indicate turn lane only. A vehicle may use this lane only in preparation to turn left or right across the opposite lanes. The turn lane is never used for passing. Painted crosswalks are placed at intersections and at other locations where there is regular pedestrian traffic. Approach crosswalks with care. Never stop your car on any part of a crosswalk. Pedestrians using crosswalks should check in both directions before crossing the street. However, drivers must always yield to pedes, trians and crosswalks, even if the crosswalk is not marked. Traffic Signs and Signals You must be able to recognize and obey traffic signs and signals. The U.S. is currently converting to an international style, which uses pictures and symbols rather than words. This change will be gradual, new designs will be accompanied by word messages until the public is familiar with them. Signs have eight standard shapes and eight standard colors. Each one has a specific meaning. Red, stop or prohibition. If you see red on a traffic device, stop. Green, directional guidance and permitted movement. Octagon, exclusively for stop signs. Horizontal rectangle. Usually for guide signs. Yellow, general warning. Equilateral triangle. Exclusively for yield signs. Blue, motorist services GUID, ANTS. Pennant, warning of. NO passing zone ahead. Black, regulation. Diamond, exclusively to warn of existing or possible hazard on or adjacent to roadway. White, regulation. Vertical rectangle, usually used for regulatory signs, such as speed limits. Orange, construction or maintenance warning. Pentagon, school crossing signs and warning of school zones ahead. Brown, public recreation and scenic guidance. Round, warning of railroad crossing ahead. A solid red light means you must make a complete stop and remain stopped until the light turns green. 
Exception, you may turn right while the light is red. But first, you must stop calm completely, and you must yield to other traffic and pedestrians. You may not turn on red if a sign prohibits you. Before turning right on red, you must first stop completely, only yielding before turning is not enough, and is illegal. A solid yellow light means the light will soon turn red. Slow down and prepare to stop. If a green light turns yellow as you are approaching, slow down and prepare to stop. A solid green light means you may go if it is safe to do so. You must yield to any pedestrians and to any traffic already in the intersection. Exception, if you are turning left, the solid green light means you must yield to oncoming traffic. A green arrow means you may turn in the direction of the arrow if you are in the proper lane. Oncoming traffic will have a red light when your turn arrow is green, giving you a protected turn. A yellow flashing arrow means you may turn in the direction of the arrow if you are in the proper lane. You must yield to oncoming traffic. Oncoming traffic will have a green light when your turn AR row is flashing, so you do not have a protected turn. A yellow solid arrow is the same as a solid yellow light. It indicates that the light is about to change to red. Slow down and prepare to stop. Some traffic signals direct a traffic lane, or two side-by-side -side lanes, from which you may travel straight or turn left. All guidelines for yielding to traffic and pedestrians still apply. Red light, you must stop. You may not turn left, and you may not continue straight. Green arrow, you may turn left from turn lane. Red light, you may not continue straight through the intersection. You must stop and wait. Green arrow, you may turn left from turn lane. Green light, you may continue straight through the intersection. Yellow arrow, use caution. The signal is transitioning from a green arrow, protected turn, to an unprotected turn or to a red light. Green light, you may travel straight. You may turn left only if the way is clear. This is an unprotected turn, and you must yield to oncoming traffic. Yellow light, use caution. The signal is transitioning from green to red. Slow down and prepare to stop. A flashing red light means you must stop completely and proceed with caution, following the rules for yielding right of way at intersections. A flashing yellow light means you must slow down and exercise caution. Some traffic lanes are marked by signals that indicate which lanes are available for use. For example, in the image below, the far right lane is closed. The far left and middle lanes are open. When signals like these are in use, you may travel only in a lane marked by a green light. Never travel in a lane marked with a red light. Traffic signs and signals help control the movement of traffic and prevent accidents. You should always follow them unless an officer is directing traffic. If officers are directing traffic, you must follow their directions. An officer will usually signal you to stop by holding up one hand, palm toward you, and then giving a long blast on the whistle. The officer will usually signal you to start or to continue by motioning with one hand and giving a series of short blasts on the whistle. At night, an officer may signal with a flashlight. These signs mean pedestrians may leave the curb and cross the street. These signs mean pedestrians may not leave the curb. If the sign is flashing, pedestrians must not leave the curb. Pedestrians should continue if they started to cross before the sign changed to flashing. The stop sign is the only sign with eight sides. It requires you to come to a calm, pleat stop before entering an intersect tie-in. After stopping, you must yield to any traffic close enough to be a hazard. The yield right-of-way sign is an equilateral triangle GLE. 
it means you must let other vehicles on the roadway have the right of way. The do not enter sign might include the words do not enter, or it might only include the white bar across the red circle background. Either way, it means you may not enter this lane of travel. The wrong way. Sign tells you that you are traveling in the opposite direct tie-in from the other cars in your lane. You are in danger of causing a head-on collision. You must leave the roadway and turn around as soon as possible. This sign means no left turns are allowed at this intersection. This sign means no right turns are allowed at this intersection. This sign means you may not turn around in an intersection in the center of a street or in a high way median. This sign means no trucks are allowed on this street or highway. Usually, if a traffic signal is red, you may turn right after you. Stop completely and make sure the way is clear. However, signs like these mean right turns are never allowed. While the traffic signal is red, you must wait for the green light to turn right. Keep left. Keep right. You must turn left. You must turn right. This sign means you may only travel in the direction of the arrow. This sign indicates the maximum speed. Allowed under ideal, driving candy, tie-ins. This sign means you may only use the center lane to make turns. The center lane is not available for normal travel or passing. This sign designates handicapped park ing only. Parking is only allowed for vehi, clees with an official indicator, such as a handicap license tag or temporary hang tag. For information on obtaining a handicap tag, contact your county tax collector's office. This sign means that crossing into another lane to pass a vehicle is prohibited. Traffic signal. Ahead. Intersection, slash. Crossroads ahead. Right lane ends. Merge to left. Stop ahead. T intersection. Ahead. Left lane ends. Merge to right. Yield ahead. Side road ahead, on right. Access lane, slash ramp merges into road. Way, from right. Railroad, crossing. Ahead. Side road enters from angle ahead. New lane enters. Roadway. No more guy and G necessary. Two-way traffic. Divided highway. Ahead. Divided highway ends, two-way. Traffic ahead. Traffic circle, slash roundabout. Ahead. Sharp turn, left. Ahead. Curve, left, ahead. Winding road ahead. Road is slippery when wet. School crossing. This sign warns that children must cross the street on their way to and from school. The sign is sometimes located several blocks from the school. School zone. 15 miles per hour when passing a school during recess or while children are arriving at or leaving school during opening slash closing hours. Pedestrian crossing. Remember that pedestrians have the right of way at intersections, whether the crosswalk is marked or not. If traveling in a lane marked with this sign, you must continue onto the exit. This sign often accompanies a stop sign at an intersection. It tells you that although you must stop for your stop sign, this is not a four way stop. Other traffic lanes have the right of way and will not stop. Route markers. Interstate Route, Interstate Highway United States Route, U.S. Highway State Route, State Highway Auxiliary Markers Destination, Direction, and Distance Markers These signs indicate travel distance to towns and cities. For example, from the sign on the right, Hattiesburg is 3 miles ahead while Jackson is 93 miles ahead. This sign indicates a place where you may exit an interstate highway. You would use this lane to access U.S. Highway 59. 
north, toward Hattiesburg. You would use one of these lanes to access Interstate 55 north, toward Jackson. This emblem identifies slow-moving vehicles, vehicles that travel 25, 25, miles per hour or less. Watch carefully for these vehicles, both day and night. Railroad Crossings Always be especially alert at railroad crossings. The approaches to public railroad crossings are usually marked with warning signs and pavement markings. The crossings themselves are marked with one or more of the following. RR This round yellow sign, with a black cross buck and two R's, means a railroad crossing is ahead. In rural areas, this sign is normally posted 500 to 900 feet in front of the tracks. It tells you to look, listen, and slow down because you may have to stop. This white, cross buck sign is posted at most railroad crossings. If there is more than one track, the number of tracks is shown on a sign below the cross buck. Pavement markings warn and direct drivers and regulate traffic. In front of railroad crossings, the pavement is marked with a large X and two R's. A solid yellow line is used to prevent passing in advance of the crossing and a white line is painted on each side of the track. Flashing light signals are used with the cross buck sign at many railroad crossings. Always stop when the lights begin to flash. The lights mean a train is coming. Remain stopped until the lights stop flashing and you can proceed with safety. Gates are used with flashing light signals at some crossings. Always stop when the lights begin to flash before the gates lower across your side of the tracks. Remain stopped until the gates are raised and the lights stop flashing. Regardless of signage and whether lights are flashing, the following must stop at all railroad crossings, a school bus carrying even one child, a vehicle for hire carrying passengers, or a vehicle carrying explosives or flammable LIQ. UIDS These vehicles must stop within 50, 50, to 10, 10, feet of the outer rail of any crossing. After coming to a complete stop, the driver must check both directions for any approaching train before proceeding. Remember, all drivers must always stop within 50. 50 to 10, 10 feet of the outer rail of any railroad crossing when you see any of the fall lowing. A lowered crossing gate, a flashing electric signal, a posted stop sign. A flag person giving you a signal, or a rapidly approaching train. You must stop even if you do not see a train. You must remain stopped until all tracks are clear, any gates are raised, and lights no longer flash. It is against the law to drive around any lowered gates at a crossing. Use common sense at any railroad crossing. Watch for vehi, please, that must stop whether or not a train is coming. Do not shift gears as you drive across tracks. Always check carefully for a second train, following close behind the first. Stay alert at all times and never try to beat a train. If a traffic officer directs you to proceed over a railroad crossing, follow the order immediately. If a vehicle becomes stranded on a railroad track, or if you notice a dangerous situation on or near a Railroad crossing, look for the blue emergency notificate tie-in system, ENS, sign situated at every highway rail grade crossing. The sign is located on the black and white cross buck or on the metal box near the crossing. The toll-free number is answered by railroad dispatchers, who can attempt to stop all train traffic at the crossing during an emergency. The sign also includes an identification number for your exact location. By following the information on the sign, you can report unsafe conditions such as 1. Malfunctions of warning signals, cross ING gates, and other safety devices at the crossings, 2. Disabled cars, trucks, or other vehicles blocking the railroad tracks at the crossings, 3. The presence of trespassers on the tracks or along the right-of-way at the crossing, and 4. Any other informat ion relating to an unsafe condition at the crossing. This section contains information about traffic rules and regulations in Mississippi and Strat. EGs for being a safe driver. Please study this material carefully.
the speed limits below usually apply. However, speed limits may change for a variety of reasons. Always monitor the posted speed limit signs and glance frequently at your speedometer. You should always know how fast you are traveling. Use common sense when driving. Adjust your speed based on the situation and conditions. Reduce speed on curves when approaching intersect. Tie-ins when on a narrow or twisting road or when traffic is congested. If the weather or visibility is poor, slow down accordingly. Posted speed limits are intended for ideal conditions. Speed limits for passenger automobiles. Including one half ton trucks unloaded. Roadway type. Maximum speed. Minimum speed. Interstates. 70 miles per hour. 40 miles per hour. Four lane highways, state and U.S. 65 miles per hour. 40 miles per hour. Two lane highways, state and U.S. 55 miles per hour. Natchez Trace Parkway. 50 miles per hour. Speed limits for buses, excluding school buses. Roadway type. Maximum speed. Minimum speed. Interstates. 70 miles per hour. 40 miles per hour. Four lane highways, state and U.S. 65 miles per hour. 40 miles per hour. Two lane highways, state and U.S. 55 miles per hour. Inclement weather slash bad visibility. 45 miles per hour. Use your vehicle signal lights, blinkers, to alert other drivers each time you intend to turn, change lanes, pass, or enter or exit a parallel parking space. The best way to notify other drivers that you intend to turn or pass is to use your signal lights well in advance. If the vehicle ahead of you signals for a turn, activate your signal only if you also intend to turn. Do not signal to warn others that the vehicle in front of you is turning. Do not use your left signal to let a vehicle behind you know it is safe to pass. The driver behind you is responsible for determining whether it is safe to pass. Arm signals are used by bicyclists, motorists whose signal lights are malfunctioning, and drivers of some antique vehicles and farm equipment. If you are using arm signals, be sure to extend your arm fully and signal continuously for at least 100, 100 feet before you slow down, turn, stop, or change lanes. Left turn, extend your arm and hand straight out. This signal is also used when changing from the right lane to the left lane, or when starting from a parallel parking position. Right turn, extend your arm and hand upward, with your arm. Bent at the elbow. This signal is also used when changing from the left lane to the right lane, or when preparing to enter a parallel parking space. Slow down or stop, extend your arm and hand downward, with your palm facing the rear. At 10 miles per hour. Leave at least 1, 1. Car length at 20 miles per hour leave at least. 2, 2. Car lengths at 30 miles per hour. Leave. At least. 3, 3. Following too closely to another vehicle is dangerous. When you are following another vehicle, allow at least one car length between you for every 10 miles per hour of speed. This will help give you room to slow down or stop if the vehicle in front of you changes speed suddenly. It's also important to maintain distance so that you can see around the vehicle ahead of you. When you are fall, lowing a large truck or bus, allow yourself even more room. If you are taking part in a motorcade, such as a funeral procession, allow enough space between you and the next car so that other vehicles may safely pull into those spaces. Be careful not to follow too closely. Measure your speed against the other vehicles so that everyone is moving along smoothly. Car lengths At 40 miles per hour Leave at least 4, 4 Car lengths At 50 miles per hour Leave at least 5, 5 Car lengths Etc.
The chart below shows the shortest total stopping distances under ideal conditions. If the weather is bad, the road is slick, or if you are tired or intoxicated, then the distances will be drastically different. The yellow segments show the distance required for thinking prior to activation of brakes. The red segments show distance from application of brakes to stop. The total distance required for stopping is indicated across the top of each entry. At 70 miles per hour to 415 feet to stop. 164 feet. 251 feet. You are in a traffic lane whenever you are driving on any street or highway. These lanes may or may not be marked, but they exist just the same. A street or highway's number of lanes corresponds to the number BR of cars, or lines of cars, that could travel on it side by side. One lane street or highway equals room for one car two lane street or highway equals room for two cars three lane street or highway equals room for three cars four lane street or highway equals room for four cars. If lanes travel in opposite directions, they will be separated by pavement markings, lines, barricades, or medians. The image on the top right shows a four-lane highway divided by double yellow lines. Green arrows indicate the direction of travel. The green arrows are not pavement markings. Some travel lanes have adjacent parking lanes. For exam, PLE, the image on the right shows a two-lane street with a parking lane on one side. Never cross a double yellow line, not even to pass a slow-moving car. You will be driving into oncoming traffic. Always drive in a single lane. Never change lanes unless the movement can be made safely. On a four-lane highway, drive in the right lane except when passing or preparing to turn left. Use the center turn lane when preparing to turn left. Use this lane for travel. Use this lane for travel. Use the center turn lane when preparing to turn left. Passing on a two-lane highway. Passing is allowed in some areas of two-lane highways. Pay close attention to the center line markings. Solid double yellow line. And no passing from either direction. Solid yellow line plus broken yellow line. Vehicle traveling alongside the broken yellow line may cross the lines to pass. Vehicle traveling alongside the solid yellow line may not cross the lines to pass. See the diagrams on the previous page for examples. Passing on a four-lane highway or interstate. It is never legal to move across the center line of a four-lane highway to pass another vehicle. However, on interstates and four-lane highways, passing is allowed from both the left and right lanes, traveling in the same direction when lanes are divided by a broken white line. Passing on the left When you decide to pass another vehicle on the left, be sure that the lane ahead is clear before you move. Do not tailgate a vehicle that you intend to pass. Drop back far enough so that you can see around it before you try to change lanes. Watch for safe clearance, both ahead and behind. Signal your intentions before you move into the left lane. Check carefully and move cautiously but quickly into the left lane. Do not pull back into the right lane until you are well past the other vehicle. Before moving back into the right lane, make sure that you can see the past vehicle in your rearview mirror. Passing on the right. You may overtake and pass another vehicle on the right in the following situations. When the vehicle you are passing is making or is about to make a left turn. On an interstate with multiple lanes traveling in your direction. On a four-lane highway of adequate width where there are no obstructions or parked cars. On any one-way highway of adequate width. If you do pass on the right, do so only when conditions permit you to do so safely. Under no circumstance ES are you allowed to drive off the pavement or on the shoulder to pass. Other safe passing guidelines. Do not pass on hills, curves, or within 100, 100 feet of bridges, viaducts, overpasses, railroad crossings, crosswalks, intersections, or any place where your view is obstructed in any way. And pass only when the weather is good, never when it is raining or sleeting. When being passed on a two-lane or three-lane highway, 
keep to the right and do not increase your speed until the other car has completely passed you. This car may cross center lines to pass. The oncoming lane must be clear. Double yellow. Line means NO cars may pass. In this area, from either D Rection, this car must not pass. Because it is in the travel lane closest to the solid line. This car must not pass. Because it is in the travel lane closest to the solid line. This car may cross center lines to pass. The oncoming lane must be clear. At times you will have to turn your car in a confined space. To do so safely, follow this procedure. Start from the extreme right side of the road, give the correct signal, and turn the steering wheel sharply to the left while inching forward. When you have turned the wheels completely to the left, drive slowly forward to within a few inches of the left curb or edge of the road. Then turn sharply to the right while inching backward. When you have turned the wheels completely to the right, back slowly to within a few inches of the curb. Turn your wheels to the left and pull forward. Repeat these steps as needed until you have completed the turn. More accidents occur at intersections than anywhere else. Often there is a failure of communication among drivers, or someone takes an unnecessary chance when turning. To make a safe turn, follow these guidelines. Know where you want to turn. If you are not sure, drive slowly and read the street signs or road markers. Avoid last-minute turns. Signal what you intend to do. Give pedestrians and other drivers advance notice of your intentions. Get into the correct lane as soon as possible. Look around you in all directions before you change lanes or turn. Do not assume that other drivers will see you. Be sure. Slow down well before you reach the crosswalk of the intersection and complete the turn at a consistent speed. Do not push down on the brake or clutch while you are turn ing. Do not shift gears while entering the intersection. Stay in your lane throughout the turn. Finish the turn in the proper lane. The diagrams on the following pages show the correct methods for making safe turns. Study them carefully. Step 5. When it is safe, return to the right lane. Step 4. Obey any traffic signal or sign. When travel is permitted, look both ways before entering intersection. Then enter just to the right of center. Step 3. Keep close to the center line and keep your wheels straight. While waiting to turn. Step 2. At least 100, 100 feet from the intersection, turn on left signal and slow down. Step 1. Well ahead of turn, check for traffic and move safely into the left lane. Use your signal to indicate you are changing lanes. Do not swing. Into left lane. Step 5. Continue in the right lane. Step 4. Obey any traffic signal or sign. When travel is permitted, look both ways before entering intersection. Then enter, keeping as close as possible to the right. Step 1. If you are not already in the right lane, move into the right lane well ahead of the turn. Check for traffic, use your signal, and move safely. Step 3. Keep close to the right side of the lane and keep your wheels straight while waiting to turn. Step 2. At least 100, 100 feet from the intersection, turn on right signal and slow down. Multiple turn lanes and lane options. Some roadways allow vehicles in multiple lanes to turn at the same time. Similarly, some lanes permit drivers to either continue straight or to make a turn. The diagrams on this page show intersections with side-by-side -side turn lanes and with lanes that permit turning or continuing straight. Always follow directional arrows. If you choose to turn, be certain to stay in your lane. Only. Turning left of center. When two drivers approach an intersection and both drivers want to turn left, 
each driver should turn to the left of the other. Leave from the left lane and enter into the left lane. One-way streets. A good rule to remember when traveling on a one-way street is to always turn from the lane nearest the curb. Pavement markings or signage may permit turning. From additional lanes. The diagram on the left shows two intersecting one-way streets. At this intersection, turning right is permitted from one street, but not from the other. Conversely, turning left is permitted from one street, but not from the other. These restrictions keep drive errors from traveling in the wrong direction on a one-way street. The most dangerous place on a highway is an intersection. Follow these guidelines as you approach and cross intersections. Always approach any cross street or road with extreme caution. If you cannot see the entire intersection as you approach, slow down and proceed cautiously. Be sure to look in both directions as you cross. If traffic is blocked when you approach an intersection, stop before you reach the crosswalk and wait for traffic to move. Slow down as you approach the intersection and stop if required. Gradually increase your speed as you clear the intersection. As you cross, drive defensively. Do not assume that pedestrians or other drivers understand your intentions. Slow down as you approach, not as you cross or turn. The vehicle on the right has right-of-way. The vehicle intending to travel straight through has the right-of-way. Four-way stop. At a four-way stop, right-of-way is deter mind by which vehicle arrives first and by where the vehicle is located relative to the others. The first vehicle to arrive has right-of-way. If multiple vehicles arrive at the same time, the vehicle on the right has right-of-way. Do not slam on your brakes to stop first. Yield to the driver on right. Two-way stop. At a two-way stop, the cross-traffic with no stop signs has the right-of-way. Vehicles AR arriving at stop signs must wait until the way is clear before proceeding. When the way is clear, the first vehicle to arrive at a stop sign has the right of way. If two vehicles arrive at the same time, the vehicle intending to travel straight across has right of way, the vehi CLE intending to turn across the traffic lane must yield and wait. The vehicle signaling to turn across the traffic lane must yield and wait. When entering a street or highway from a driveway or other entrance point, you must stop and yield to oncoming traffic, even if no stop sign is present. Unmarked Intersection If you encounter a highway intersection with no traffic signs or signals, yield to AP, pro-waking traffic, then proceed only when it is safe. Yield to oncoming car already, in circle. Merge carefully, if way is clear. Roundabouts at a roundabout or traffic circle, yield to oncoming traffic already inside the circle. Always enter and exit the circle by traveling toward your right. Be especially careful when sharing the road with school buses. Each time you encounter a school bus with its red lights flashing and or with its stop sign extended, Mississippi law states that you must come to a complete stop at least 10, 10 feet away from the bus. Remain stopped until the children have crossed the roadway and the bus has resumed motion, its red lights no longer flash, and its stop sign is retracted. You must stop for the school bus, regardless of your direction of travel. One exception to the procedures above is for drivers traveling on a divided highway. If you are traveling on a highway with four or more lanes, with at least two lanes of travel in opposite direct tie-ins, then if you are traveling in the same direction as the stopped school bus, you must still follow the procedures above. Come to a complete stop. Proceed only after the children have exited the roadway and the bus has resumed motion, its red lights no longer flash, and the school bus stop sign is retracted. If you are traveling in the opposite direction as the stopped school bus you may continue e travel on your side of the divided highway without stopping. If the school bus is stopped in a loading zone that is part of the highway or adjacent to the highway, and where pedestrians are not allowed to cross the roadway, you do not have to stop. If you are convicted of violating the law described on the previous page, penalties are as follows. 
first offense, fine not less than $350 and not more than $750, or imprisonment for not more than one, one, year, or both. Second or subsequent offense, within five, five, years, fine not less than $750 and not more than $1,500, or imprisonment for not more than one, one, year, or both. In addition, suspension of driver's license and driving privileges for 90, 90, days. Any ambulance, fire engine, or police car flashing red or blue lights or signaling with a bell or SI run always has the right of way on any street in any traffic situation. If possible, pull your vehicle over to the extreme right shoulder of the road until the emergency vehicle has passed. If you are at an intersection, proceed through the intersection and pull over to the extreme right shoulder. If an emergency vehicle with lights or siren activated is parked along the side of a four-lane highway, merge into the lane away from the emergency vehicle if it is safe to do so. If merging into an adjacent lane is not safe, slow down and prepare to stop if necessary. You must yield right-of-way. Although not required by law, common courtesy is to yield the right-of-way to funeral processions. A person walking across the street within a crosswalk, whether or not the crosswalk is marked, always has the right of way. As a driver, you must be extremely careful around pedestrians. Always keep your vehicle under control, and be prepared to yield to those on foot. Watch for pedestrians exiting parked cars or walking between parked cars. Watch for pedestrians entering crosswalks as you prepare to turn. In general, when you park your vehicle, put the gear in park, automatic transmission, or low, standard transmission, set the parking brake firmly, and turn off the ignition. Prohibited parking. You may not stop and leave your vehicle parked and unattended in any of the following places, in front of a public or private driveway, within 20, 20 feet of the driveway entrance to any fire station, or within 75. 75 feet if it is so posted. Within 10, 10 feet of a fire hydrant, on a sidewalk. On a crosswalk. Within 20, 20 feet of a crosswalk at an intersection, inside an intersection. Within 30, 30 feet of the approach to any traffic control device, within 15, 15 feet of the nearest rail of any railroad crossing, on any bridge or elevated structure. In any highway underpass. On the roadway side of any vehicle stopped or parked at the edge of the road or the curb, alongside any obstruction when your parking would add to traffic congestion. At any place where traffic signs prohibit stopping. Parking on a highway. Outside of business or residential districts, you must park off the roadway. If you must park along a highway, take measures to keep other cars from running into yours. Be sure to. Pull all the way off the roadway. If possible, leave at least 20, 20 feet for other vehicles to get by. Park so you can be seen from at least 200, 200 feet in both directions. Leave your parking lights or emergency flashers on if it is night. Parallel parking. The images on the right, steps 1 to 4, show how to maneuver into a parallel space. For vehicles parked parallel, tires should be within 12, 12 inches of the curb. Use extreme care when exiting your vehicle from the street side. Unload your vehicle from the curbside. Step 1. Select a space large enough to accommodate your car. Use your signal to show you intend to enter the space. Stop alongside the car in front of the space. Exiting a parking space. The driver leaving a parking space does not have the right of way. Be careful not to cause a traffic accident. Before you drive the vehicle out of the parking space, be certain the way is clear of any traffic or pedestrians. You must yield to any oncoming traffic. When leaving a parallel parking posy tie-in look back over your shoulder to be sure you can safely drive the vehicle out of the parking space and into traffic. Use your signal before entering the travel lane. When leaving a diagonal or straight in parking position wait until the area behind the vehicle is clear, 
and keep a proper lookout by looking back while backing up. Always look back over your shoulder while backing up. Never rely on your rearview mirror alone. Step 2. Make sure you will not interfere with oncoming traffic. Cut your wheels sharply to the right and back. Slowly toward the curb. Stop when your front tire aligns with the back bumper of the car ahead. Step 3. Cut your wheels sharply to the left and continue backing. Be careful not to bump into the car behind you. Step 4. Pull forward into the center of the space, leaving room in front of and behind your car. Align your car with in 12, 12, inches of the curb. To park safely on a hill, follow the diagrams below. In a downhill position, turn your wheels sharply to the right, whether or not there is a curb. In an uphill position with no curb, turn your wheels sharply to the right. In an uphill position with a curb, turn your wheels sharply to the left. Downhill. No curb with curb. Wheels toward right. Wheels toward right. Uphill. No curb with curb. Wheels toward right. Wheels toward left. Visibility is greatly reduced at night. This makes it necessary to reduce your speed and to exercise caution. You can only see as far as your headlights can reach. Be careful not to overdrive your headlights. Do not drive so fast that you cannot stop within the distance you can see. If you meet a vehicle at night with bright or blinding headlights, the safest thing to do is to dim your lights and keep your eyes on the right side of the road. If you meet a vehicle at night with one head light missing, drive to the far right of your lane. The glare of oncoming headlights and off-street advertisements may be a serious distraction. Never attempt to compensate for this difficulty by wearing darkened glasses. At night, or on dark days, the use of such glasses will only further reduce your vision. You are required by law to use your low beams when you approach within 500, 500 feet of an oncoming vehicle or when you are following within 500, 500 feet of another vehicle. You should use your lights between sunset and sunrise and at any other time when you cannot see clearly ahead for a distance of 500, 500 feet. Do not drive with only your parking lights turned on. If you need lights, use your headlights. Use the high beam only when driving in the open country without other cars near. Even with the high beam, speed should be lower than by day. Always use the lower beam when approaching another car so as not to blind the driver. Always use the lower beam when driving where there are street lights, when following another car, and in fog during night or day. Using high beams in fog reduces visibility. Seat belts, car seats, and child restraints. Mississippi law requires the following. Drivers and all passengers of motor vehicles shall wear a properly fastened safety seat belt, regardless of whether the passenger is in the front seat or back seat of the vehicle. Children under the age of 4, 4 years old must be properly secured in a child passenger restraint device, car seat, that meets applicable safety standards. Children at least 4, 4 years old but under 7, 7 years old who are less than 4 feet 9 inches in height or who weigh less than 65, 65 pounds must be properly secured in a belt positioning booster seat system that meets applicable safety standards. If more than 2, 2 children who are required to use a booster seat are being transported in a vehicle at one time and the vehicle only has 2, 2 lap and shoulder belts in the rear seat, then only the 2, 2 Children sitting in the seats with the lap and shoulder belts are required to use a properly secured booster seat. Other children may be secured with a safety lap belt only. Violators of the safety belt and child restraint law can be fined. Please follow the following recommendations. The driver and all passengers in the vehicle must be buckled up. The American Academy of Pediatrics recommends keeping children in a rear-facing car seat until the child reaches the maximum height or weight for a convertible seat. This is usually 3, 3, to 5, 5 years old, depending on the seat and the child's growth. Children weighing 40 to 65, 40 minus 65, pounds should use a booster seat designed for motor vehicle use. 
Children should always ride in the back seat. Safe Driving Basics Drivers cause 85% of all accidents. The safety and well-being of many other people will depend on your calm and responsible behavior as a driver. Before you drive To prepare to drive, you should Make certain you have your driver's license with you. State law requires drivers pre-send a driver's license upon request. Adjust your seat to a comfortable position so that you can reach the wheel and ped. ALS easily. Fasten your seat belt. Adjust the rear view mirror so that you can see the roadway behind. Adjust your side view mirrors as well. While you drive, two hands on the wheel. Keep both hands on the steering wheel while driving. The ideal position for holding the wheel varies with each driver, but at least one-third of the wheel should separate the hands. The left hand should be on the wheel at 9 o'clock, as on the face of the clock, and the right hand at 3 o'clock. Never drive with your elbow resting in the window. While you drive, pay attention. While driving, pay careful attention for the following. Children, they may act without thinking, especially when playing with or chasing a ball. Slow down and proceed with caution around schools, playgrounds, residential areas, and other areas where children may be walking, bicycling, or playing. Bicyclists, do not assume any cyclist, especially children, have training in bicycle safety. Parked cars on the side of the street, the door might open and obstruct your lane. Signals that another vehicle may be pulling out into the flow of traffic. Sudden turns and stops by other drivers, reckless drivers, get out of their way if possible. While driving long distances. The following strategies are suggested for driving long distances. Take a break every 100, 100 miles. Do not follow the same vehicle or group of vehicles for long periods. You may become too. Relaxed and lose your concentration. Keep your eyes moving to avoid going to sleep at the wheel, and do not stare. Keep the interior of your car as cool as possible. Be a safer driver by avoiding the following distractions. Cell phone use. Drivers distracted by cell phones cause thousands of accidents each year. If you must make a phone call while driving, the Mississippi Department of Public Safety recommends that you use a hands-free device and keep your hands on the wheel. Texting on your cell phone while you drive is not allowed. Headphones and loud music. Never wear stereo headphones while you drive, and never play your car stereo or radio loudly while driving. You may be unable to hear warning signals such as whist, please, and sirens. Visual obstructions and other distractions. Your windshield must be free of any signs or unofficial. Stickers Vehicles registered in this state may not have signs, posters, stickers, or glassy material that causes a mirrored effect on the windows. Avoid hanging decorative items from your rearview mirror. Keep the front seat clear of objects that can fall during sudden movement. Emotional Distractions if you are preoccupied with personal problems, you may become too dis tracked to handle your vehicle safely. Domestic quarrels, financial concerns, or illness can cause distractions, which make you more accident-prone. If you have just had an argument or are war-read, ill, angry, frightened, or grief-stricken, let someone else drive. In the event of hazardous road conditions and emergencies, follow these guidelines. In rainy conditions be especially careful. Many drivers pull off the road during a heavy downpour, but not everyone realizes that the opening minutes of rain or drizzle are actually the most dangerous. The first water to hit the road loosens accumulated dirt and grease. This immediately forms a mixture which quickly coats the road with a dangerously slick film. Slow down when rain begins to fall for your own safety. When water is on the roadway, reduce your speed. High speeds under such conditions can cause your vehicle to hydroplane out of control. Most automobile skids are caused by driving too fast for the weather and road conditions. If your vehicle starts to skid, turn the wheel in the direction of the skid, but only if you can do so without running off the road or hitting something. Remember that braking suddenly will increase the skid. 
never use the clutch when you are trying to stop a skid. If you have a flat tire or blowout, do not apply your brakes suddenly. Take your foot off the AC accelerator and then apply the brakes slowly and cautiously. If you have plenty of stopping distance, allow the vehicle stop by itself. If you run off the pavement, use the brakes lightly before returning to the roadway. If your car becomes disabled, pull over to the extreme right shoulder. If you must walk to seek help, always walk on the left side of the highway, facing oncoming traffic. Be extremely careful crossing any highway, and never cross any interstate. In case of an accident. If you are involved in an accident. Stop at once and help anyone who has been injured. Dial 911 to report injuries if necessary. Report immediately to the proper law enforcement authorities if the accident involves injury, death, or apparent property damage exceeding $500. Give all other parties involved in the accident your name, address, license plate number, and insurance information. For your own protection, be sure to get the same information from them. When the officer arrives at the accident scene, you must show proof of insurance and insure and policy number. Additional information about Mississippi's vehicle insurance require meant is provided later in this booklet. If you do not have proof of insurance, you may be CIT ed for a violation even if you are not at fault for the accident. Remember, whether or not you are at fault in an accident, you must report it unless there are no injuries and the property damage amounts to less than $500. If you are injured so bad ly that you cannot make an immediate report, any one of your passengers may do so. These reports are confidential. Interstate Highway Driving Entering and Exiting the Interstate To enter the interstate, drive along the ramp and obey the posted ramp speed. As you reach the end of the ramp, increase your speed in the acceleration lane until you reach the speed of the interstate highway traffic. It is dangerous to merge from a speed that is slower or faster than the flow of traffic. To merge into a travel lane, yield to any approaching vehicles and never turn suddenly into the main flow of traffic. First, give the proper signal and then slowly merge into the traffic. Switch off your turn signal after you merge. To exit the interstate, be sure you are in the correct lane at least one quarter mile from your exit. Most exits are on the right and require you to exit from the right-hand lane. However, some exits are on the left and require you to exit from the left-hand lane. Watch the signs to be certain of your exit's location. Before exiting the interstate, check for vehicles beside and behind you, signal your intentions, and move into the deceleration lane. Do not slow down until you have safely moved into the deceleration lane. Then reduce your speed to the posted limit and turn off your signal. If you take the wrong exit, continue off the exit. If you miss your exit, do not stop and back up, con. Continue to the next exit. Never stop, back up, or turn around on an exit ramp. Lane use, passing, and changing lanes. Use the proper lane at all times. The right lane is intended for through travel while the left lane is intended for passing. On the interstate, passing on either the right or left is permissible. Be sure to stay in the right lane if you are traveling more slowly than the other traffic. When being passed, do not speed up. When passing, do not drive alongside any vehicle longer than it takes you to pass. It is dangerous to drive in another vehicle's blind spot. When traveling in an interstate's right lane, watch for vehicles entering the right lane from access ramps and acceleration lanes. In order for vehicles to enter the right lane safely, merge left when safe to do so. To change lanes, check your rear view and side mirrors and check your blind spot for vehicles beside and behind you. Then signal your intentions clearly. When you are sure it is safe, move into the lane you wish to drive in. Follow the same steps when returning to your former lane. Be sure to switch off your turn signal after changing lanes. Blind Spots This car is in the center. Car's Blind Spot The center car's driver's side mirror will not reflect a vehicle in this area. 
This car is in the center. Car's blind spot. The center car's passenger side mirror will not reflect a vehicle in this area. Speed limits and following distance. The speed limit for interstate driving is 70, 70 miles per hour for both day and night. All speed limits are for ideal road and weather conditions. Adjust your speed according to circumstances. Be mindful of the posted minimum speed limit. Following too closely is extremely dangerous, especially on the interstate. Tailgating another vehicle is a main reason for collisions on the interstate. If you are driving at 70, 70, mph, stay at least 7 car lengths from the vehicle ahead. If you are driving 50, 50, mph, stay at least 5, 5, car lengths from the vehicle ahead. Accidents and Breakdowns If you are involved in an accident or your car breaks down, move your vehicle off the pavement onto the extreme right shoulder, or as far to the right as is practical. At night, leave your lights on and use your emergency flashers. If your vehicle breaks down, let others know that you need help by turning on your emergency flash airs, raising the hood of your vehicle, and tying a white cloth to your door handle, antenna, or other prominent place. If you are stranded on the interstate, never get out of your vehicle into the main flow of traffic. Do not stand beside your vehicle. Never walk along or across the interstate. Never attempt to hitchhike. Stay inside your vehicle, lock the doors, and wait for reliable help. The diagrams below indicate the correct way to use the four principal types of interstate in Turchung ES. All ramps and exits are normally marked clearly. If you are unsure how to enter the interstate, pull off the road and stop and check for the correct route. Do not proceed until you are sure how to use the ramp. When traveling on interstates and highways used by large trucks and tractor trailers, follow these guidelines. Beware of blind spots. Large vehicles have limitations of which motorists may be unaware. The most significant of these are blind spots, areas around the oversized vehicle, where the driver's ability to see and react to other vehicles is restricted. To avoid being in the driver's rear blind spot, don't follow the vehicle too close ly. Instead, position your vehicle so that the professional driver can see your vehicle in his side mirror roars. Remember, if you can't see the side mirrors on the front of the oversized vehicle you are follow ing, the driver cannot see you. Follow safely. When following a large vehicle at night, always dim your headlights. Bright lights from the vehicle behind can blind the driver when they reflect off the vehicle's large side mirrors. If you are stopped behind a large vehicle on an upgrade, leave additional space in case the vehicle drifts backwards slightly when it starts to move. Remember to keep to the left in your lane so the driver can see that you are stopped behind the vehicle. Do not follow too closely. An average tractor trailer weighs approximately 80,000 pounds. Oversized vehicles may take longer to stop. Pass safely. When passing a large vehicle, first check to your front and rear, then move into the passing lane only. If it is clear and while in a legal passing zone. On a level highway, it takes 3 to 5 seconds longer to pass a large vehicle than to pass a car. On an upgrade, it may be easier to pass a large vehicle, as it often loses speed. While on a downgrade, the large vehicle's momentum will cause it to go faster, so you may need to increase your speed in order to pass. Simply waiting to pass when it is safer to do so is always an option. Before returning to the lane of the vehicle you have passed, be sure to move back only when you can see the front wheels of the truck meeting the pavement in your rearview mirror. Remember to maintain your speed once you have completed the passing maneuver. When a large vehicle passes you, help the driver by keeping to the far side of your lane. Never speed up when an oversized vehicle is passing you. When you meet a large vehicle coming from the opposite direction, keep as far to the right as possibly to avoid a sideswipe crash and reduce the wind turbulence. Remember that wind turbulence pushes vehicles apart, it does not pull them together. Right Turns Large vehicles require more space to make a turn and need to swing to the left of the lane when preparing to make a right turn. 
To avoid a crash, do not pass a truck on the right if there is a possibility that it might be making a right turn. Sharing the road with bicycles According to Mississippi law, a bicycle is considered a vehicle when ridden on public roads. Any person riding a bicycle has the same rights and responsibilities as a driver of a motor vehicle. Drivers must Yield to oncoming bicyclists, just as you would yield to oncoming motorists. Leave a safe distance of at least 3. 3. Feet between the vehicle and bicycle. When passing the bicycle. Only pass a bicycle traveling in the same direction in a non-passing zone when it is safe to do so. After passing a bicyclist proceeding in the same direction, make a right turn only if the turn can be made with REA sonable safety. Do not cut off a cyclist by turning in front of them. Note, when passing a bicyclist, use extra caution in order to pass safely. Do not try to share the lane with a bicyclist when passing. Reduce speed, move into the next lane and pass in the normal manner, just as you would pass a motor vehicle. If there is oncoming traffic, slow down behind the bicyclist and pass when the oncoming traffic has cleared. Leave plenty of room while passing. The wind effects from a MOV ING vehicle can cause a bicyclist to lose control if the vehicle passes too closely. Cyclists must Observe all traffic laws, including stop, ping for stop signs, stop lights, and obey, ING, any other road signs. Use arm slash hand signals for turning. Ride as far to the right in the lane as is safely possible. Generally, this means riding 2 to 4, 2 to 4, feet from the right edge of the road. A bicyclist may move to the left slash farther into the traffic lane when overtaking and passing another vehi, CLE, traveling in same direction as the bicycle. Unsafe conditions are present on the right side of the lane, such as broken or missing pavement, pedestrians, uneven males, parked cars, or road hazards, gravel, tree limbs, broken glass, etc. The cyclist intends to travel straight through an intersection, and the right lane is for right turns only, or the cyclist intends to turn left. Follow the tips below to improve your safety when traveling by bicycle. Wear a helmet. This is one of the most effective ways to reduce risk of serious injury. Note that depending on local laws, riding without a helmet may be illegal. Travel with the direction of traffic. Never ride a bicycle facing oncoming traffic. Ride predictably. Don't weave in and out of traffic or back and forth in the road. Enter roadways carefully. Yield to oncoming traffic, just as you would if traveling by car. Be certain your path is clear before riding out of alleys, driveways, or from behind. Parked cars. Be visible. Wear bright clothing. A bright headlight, taillight, and reflective vest or cloth ING should be used if riding at night. Use a luggage carrier, basket, or saddlebags, panniers, for carrying items. Never ride two people on a bicycle built for one. Never hitch your bicycle to another vehicle. Use common sense. Even though you have a right to ride on the road, use common courtesy. If traffic conditions make it difficult for motorists to pass you, pull off the road periodically to let the motorists pass safely. Do not let long lines of cars back up behind you for extended periods. State law does permit bicyclists to ride side by side, but bicyclists riding two abreast should not impede the normal and reasonable movement of traffic. When riding on a multi-lane roadway, always ride within a single lane. Mississippi residents' vehicles must have a Mississippi license plate and certificate of title. Windows with aftermarket tinting must also have a window tint inspection certificate and decal. Vehicles must have adequate insurance. Each of these requirements is described below. You must purchase your license plate, tag, in the county where you live. Contact your local tax call, lector, for information about this purchase. For information on tags for large trucks, contact the State Tax Commission in Jackson. If you have moved to Mississippi, you must obtain a Mississippi license plate within 30, 30 days. 
you are required by law to mount your Mississippi license plate on the rear of your vehicle. Trailer hitches, tag emblems, or any other decoration must not obscure any part of any letter or numeral on your tag. You must also have a tag light which makes the numbers on your license plate visible at 50. 50 feet at night. Every vehicle must have a certificate of title. Title applications are furnished by new and used car dealers for the vehicles they sell. Title applications must be supported by a bill of sale and two years tag receipts. If you are bringing a vehicle into Mississippi, you need only present your out-of-state title to apply. You must obtain a Mississippi tag within 30, 30 days. All licensed motor vehicle dealers and all county tax collectors must be qualified, by law, to accept title applications. Banks, finance companies, and other financial institutions may also qualify as DSIG NATE agents by the Mississippi State Tax Commission. Any vehicle registered in Mississippi that has an aftermarket window tint film applied must have the windows inspected by an official Mississippi window tint inspection station. The window tint compliance certificate and decal cost is $5. The window tint decal must be affixed to the lower left corner of the windshield. The compliance certificate must be kept on the dashboard or inside the dash compartment. All windows must have a light transmittance of 28% or greater to be deemed legal. For more information and the location of window tint inspection stations, visit www.dps.ms.gov. Proof of Insurance and Safety Responsibility Act The Safety Responsibility Act helps guarantee all Mississippi licensed drivers take financial responsibility for accidents they may cause. According to Mississippi law, every motor vehicle operated in this state must have liability insurance. Proof of Insurance The insured parties are responsible for making sure a current, valid insurance card is kept inside each vehicle. You can be cited and fined if you have an accident or are involved in a traffic stop and cannot provide proof of insurance. What if I have an accident and cannot provide proof of insurance? If you are involved in an accident that results in death, personal injury, or a minimum of $1,000 in proper tie damages, you must, within 60, 60, days, furnish proof of your ability to pay for the damages. Otherwise, your driving privilege will be jeopardized. To prove your ability to pay, you must show that you had an adequate insurance policy in effect at the time of the accident, or show that you have either a certificate of deposit or securities valuing $15,000, or show that you have a certificate of self-insurance supplemented by an agreement to pay the same judgments in the same amounts as you would have had to pay under an owner's insurance policy. A self-insurer must own a fleet of more than 25 vehicles, or deposit cash, or a negotiable security, or a corporate surety bond in an amount judged suffy, signed by the department to pay all damages, or present a release of liability, a final adjudication of non-liability for damages, or show pay meant of your damages by the other party. In addition, if you were the driver at fault in an accident that caused injuries or damages to another person or property, and you did not have liability insurance at the time of the accident, then you are required to purchase liability insurance and to file proof of insurance, Form State Route 22. The proof of insurance must show that you now have the minimum liability coverage required in Mississippi, at least $5,000 for property damage. $10,000 for any one, one, person injured or killed, and $20,000 for any two, two, persons injured or killed, and be provided by a liability insurance company licensed in Mississippi, and remain in effect for a period of three, three, years from the date of the accident. Driving under the influence of alcohol or drugs is illegal in Mississippi. The information below, da. Scribes the impact of alcohol and drugs on a driver. Mississippi's implied consent law provides the legal consequences of driving under the influence. Driving under the influence of alcohol is extremely dangerous. Alcohol can affect your personality, temperament, and judgment. 
Tests show that even two, two, beers can markedly decrease a person's reflexes and reaction time. If your reaction slowed down only a half second, and you need to hit the brakes while traveling 55, 55 miles per hour, your vehicle will travel an extra 44, 44 feet before stopping. That additional distance could be the difference between life and death. If you drink alcohol, do not drive a vehicle. Never let another person who has consumed alcohol get behind the wheel of a vehicle. Marijuana, like alcohol, slows down a person's reflexes and impairs judgment. Driving under the inn. Fluence of marijuana is very dangerous. Driving under the influence of marijuana is not only dangerous, it is illegal. When you operate a motor vehicle in the state of Mississippi, you are giving your implied consent to testing for the presence of intoxicating substances in your body. This means that if a law enforcement officer has good reason to suspect that you are operating your vehicle under the influence of an intoxicating substance, the officer can request you to take a breath or chemical test. DUI Penalties these penalties apply to drivers of any age with 0.08% blood alcohol content or higher. Offense slash conviction. Fine. Jail term. License suspension. DUI, first offense. Misdemeanor. $250 to $1,000. Up to 48. 48 hours. 120 days. DUI, second offense within five years. Misdemeanor. $600 to $1,500. Not less than five days, nor more than six months. One year. DUI, third or subsequent offense within five, five years, felony. $2,000 to $5,000. Not less than one year, nor more than five years, cause toady of MDOC. The full period of the person's sentence, and upon release from incarceration, the person will be eligible for only an interlock-restricted license for three, three, years. Zero Tolerance DUI Penalties These penalties apply to drivers under 21, 21, years of age, who have a blood alcohol content of 0.02% or higher but less than 0.08%. If a driver is under 21, 21, and has a blood alcohol content of 0.08% or higher, the offense is classified as a regular DUI, not as a zero-tolerance DUI. Offense slash conviction. Fine. License suspension. Zero-tolerance DUI, first offense. $250. 120 days. Zero tolerance DUI, second offense within five, five years. Not more than $500. One year. Zero tolerance DUI, third or subsequent offense within five, five years. Not more than $1,000. The full period of the person's sentence, upon release from incarceration, the person will be eligible for only an interlock, restricted license for three years. Your license represents your privilege to drive in Mississippi. Protect this privilege by driving safely and lawfully. If you disobey the laws of the state, or if you prove yourself unable to drive in accord ants with those laws, your license may be taken away by the Commissioner of Public Safety. The Commissioner of Public Safety is authorized to suspend your license without a preliminary here. ING if public records or other sufficient evidence indicate that. You are convicted of an offense for which mandatory revocation of license is required. You have been involved, as a driver, in any accident resulting in the death or personal injury of another person or in serious property damage. You are a habitually reckless or negligent driver. You have been frequently convicted of serious traffic violations. You are mentally or physically incompetent to drive. You have allowed a fraudulent use of your license. You are convicted of DUI or DWI in another state. You have committed an offense in another state that would, in Mississippi, have result 
Ed in the suspension or revocation of your license. You obtained a Mississippi driver's license while your license in another state was under suspension. You have failed to pay child support. The Commissioner of Public Safety must take away your license for a period of one, one, year if you are convicted of any of the following. Manslaughter or negligent homicide resulting from a driving accident. Any felony in which you used a motor vehicle. Failure to stop and render aid as required under the laws of this state in event of a motor vehicle accident. Perjury or making any false oath or statement to the department concern. ING your ownership or operation of a motor vehicle, or 3. 3. Reckless driving charges within a 12-12 month period. Note, if you post any bail and fail to appear for trial, the court can try you in your absence. If your driving privileges were suspended or revoked and are now eligible for reinstatement, the fall, lowing fees and procedures apply. Reason for suspension or revocation. Fee for reinstatement. Conviction under Mississippi implied consent. Law slash DUI or Uniform Controlled Substances Act. $175. Failure to pay child support. $25. All other suspensions. $100. For suspension due to DUI or unpaid. Tickets, mail check to. For suspension due to an accident, mail check to. Driver Records P.O. Box 958. Jackson, Mississippi, 39205. Safety Responsibility P.O. Box 958. Jackson, Mississippi, 39205. Commercial License, Class D. Most of the driving rules and regulations covered so far in this manual are meant for the ordinary driver. Commercial drivers must be familiar with many additional rules and regulations, especially those concerning trucks. If you intend to drive a commercial vehicle, study this section carefully. As a driver of a commercial vehicle, your responsibilities are more complex than those of an ordinary driver. All lights and reflectors must be clean and in working order and be visible 500, 500 feet to the rear of your truck trailer. You must have a mechanical or electrical device for giving turn signals. All reflectors on the rear and sides near the rear of your truck trailer must show a red color. All reflectors on the front and sides near the front must show an amber color. You must have two, two, red reflectors on the rear, and you must have a red tail light. You must also have a stop light, which may be incorporated with the tail light. When you apply the foot brake, the stop light must show a red or amber color. Your clearance and side marker lamps must, when lighted, display an amber color on or near the trailer's front, and must, when lighted, display a red color on or near the rear. Any vehicle which is designed or loaded so that the driver's rear view is obstructed must have a side mirror located so that the driver can see at least 200, 200 feet to the rear. Your truck's muffler must be in good working condition. You may not use a muffler cutout, bypass, or any similar device. If you operate a bus or truck at night, you must carry at least three, three flares, fuses, electric flares, or reflectors. If your vehicle becomes disabled, place one of these warning devices approximately 100, 100 feet ahead of your location, a second 100, 100 feet to the rear, and a third at the roadway side of the vehicle. In daylight hours, you should use red flags in these same positions. If you carry explosives or flammables, such as gas or oil, you must carry at least three, three electric flares, lanterns, or large flares for emergencies. Under no circumstances may you use any type of burning flares or fuses. If you carry explosives or flammables, you must also have two, two, or more fire extinguishers which should be in good working condition, filled, and positioned so that you can reach them quickly in an emergency. Width The total outside width of any vehicle, including the load being carried on that vehicle, cannot exceed 8 and 1 half, 8 1 slash 2 feet. The total outside width of a farm tractor shall not exceed 10, 10 feet. 
Height. Under no conditions may any vehicle, loaded or unloaded, exceed a total height of 13 and one half, 13 L slash 2, feet. This height is permitted only if no company, corporation, local government, government agency, or the state of Mississippi must raise, alter, reconstruct, or change in any way any underpass, trestle, wire, pole, or any other structure. If your vehicle exceeds 12 and one half, 12 L slash 2, feet in height, then either you or the vehicle's owner will be held responsible for any damage caused by the excess height. Length Single vehicle No single vehicle, loaded or unloaded, may have an overall length in excess of 40. 40 feet, including both front and rear bumpers. Semi-trailer or truck and trailer No semi-trailer operating in a truck tractor semi-trailer comina. Tie-in and no trailer drawn by a motor vehicle shall exceed a length in excess of 53, 53, feet. Semi-trailer trailer or truck and double trailer, no semi-trailer or trailer operating in a truck tractor semi-trailer trailer combination and no trailer operating in a double trailer combination drawn by a motor vehicle shall exceed a length of 30, 30, feet. Extension of load. Rear, under normal conditions, the load on the rear of a vehicle transporting forest or agriculture L products in their natural state can project no more than 28, 28, feet beyond the vehicle's rear axle. However, if these products cannot be shortened without making them useless for their intended purpose, such as utility poles, a special permit may be obtained from the Mississippi Pi Department of Transportation allowing their transportation. Vehicles with such projecting loads may legally operate only during daylight hours, and only with the load safely secured by at least 2, 2, chains, 2, 2, wire ropes, or 2, 2, nylon straps, 1, 1, positioned behind the front bolster and 1, 1, in front of the back bolster. Front, the load on any vehicle operated alone or with the load on the front unit of any comina tie-in of vehicles, must not extend more than 3, 3, feet beyond the front wheels of the vehicle or the front bumper. Weight For regulations governing gross weights of vehicles and loads, contact the nearest office of the Mississippi Department of Transportation. No semi-trailer or trailer combinations in excess of 2, 2, units, excluding the towing vehicle, will be OW. Load to operate on Mississippi highways. No more than two, two, vehicles in any combination may be towed by saddle mounts, and no more than one. One, motor vehicle may be towed by tow bar. Farm machinery is exempt from size, weight, and height limitations when operated during daylight hours on any state highway within 50, 50, miles of the point of origin. Farm machinery cannot be moved on interstate highways. Such machinery, or the vehicle towing it, must be equipped with front and rear reflector lights and a blinking light clearly visible from the front and rear. If you need to move a load that exceeds any size or weight limitation, you may request a permit to do. So from the Mississippi Department of Transportation Maintenance Division Permit Section P.O. Box 1850 Jackson, Mississippi, 39205 you will find way stations located on most main highways. You must pull your truck into these STA tie-ins so that it can be weighed to determine if it is overloaded. Call 601-359-1148 for additional information. You may not put any vehicle on the road unless it is built or loaded so that none of the load can spill, shift, leak, or in any way escape onto the roadway. Exceptions, dropping sand onto the roadway to secure traction is permitted. Authorized vehicle spraying water or any other substance to clean the roadway are exempt from this regulation. If you are driving a truck, truck trailer, or any other open-topped vehicle on a highway or interstate in Mississippi, are carrying sand, dirt, gravel, rocks, or any similar material, and your load reaches within 6, 6 inches or fewer of the top of the bed, then you must. Use a tarpaulin, canvas, or other cover to contain the load, and use four, four, six, six inch sideboards, one, one, attached to the front, one, one, to the back, and one, one, to each side of the body.
These sideboards must be lowered when you are loading the vehicle, and none of the load can extend above the body. After load ING is completed, you must raise these sideboards and secure them for the trip. Note, if you use a tarpaulin, canvas, or cover of any kind, you must secure it soundly so that no end, string, or binding flaps as the truck moves down the roadway. Following distance If you are driving a truck, truck trailer, or other similar vehicle on a roadway outside business or residential districts, you must not follow within 300, 300 feet of other trucks except when you are attempting to pass. Equipment Checks Check all your equipment, such as tires, lights, brakes, and load, during each stop. Flammable Loads If your vehicle is carrying explosives or flammable liquids, you must stop at all railroad crossings. Even if no signals warn that a train is approaching. Passenger buses and school buses must also stop. If you drive a truck carrying gasoline, oil, or explosives, be careful to avoid fires and explosions. Turn off the ignition when you put gasoline in the tank or unload the truck. Don't smoke at any time on or near the truck. In case of an accident, keep people, especially smokers, away. When driving a truck with such a load, you should keep out of business districts and heavy traffic as often as possible, and park away from buildings and other vehicles when possible. Backing up When you are preparing to back up a truck or large vehicle, Always get out and carefully check clear ants limits. Make sure that you have plenty of room to maneuver. If possible, have someone guide you when you back up. Never back into an intersection to turn around. Coasting. Never disengage the clutch while driving your truck on a downgrade. This coasting is illegal and very risky. Protecting your load. Make certain to keep rear doors locked. To get a CDL, you must pass both knowledge and skills tests. You may wish to obtain a copy of the Mississippi Professional Driver's Manual for Study. You must have a CDL to operate. A single vehicle with a GVWR of more than 26,000 pounds. A trailer with a GVWR of more than 10,000 pounds if the gross combination weight rating is more than 6,000 pounds. A vehicle designed to transport more than 15, 15, persons, including the driver. Any size vehicle which requires hazardous materials placards. If you are a 14, 14, year old apply, can't, and a driver education student, you must. Have your application properly completed and signed by both parents unless they are divorced or one is deceased. Have your PAR and signatures notarized. Present original birth certificate, social security card, school attendance form, valid for 30, 30, days. Pass the vision examination. Pass the computer examination by 80%. Note, this permit is only valid when driving with a driver education instructor. If you are a 15 to 16, 15 to 16 year old applicant, you must. Have your application properly completed and signed by both parents unless they are divorced or one is deceased. Have your parents' signatures notarized. Present original birth certificate, social security card, school attendance form, valid for 30, 30, days. Pass the vision examination. Pass the computer examination by 80%. Hold permit for 6, 6 months from issue date. If you are a 17, 17, year old AP. Plicant, you must. Have your application properly completed and signed by the applicant. Present original birth certificate, social security card, and school attendance form, valid for 30, 30, days. Pass the computer examination by 80%. Pass the vision examination. If you hold an out-of-state license, you must meet all of the requirements in your COR responding age group. The computerized exam may be waived. Your out-of-state license must be surrendered. If you do not have a hard copy license, you must obtain an inability to surrender affidavit, and it must be notarized. If you hold a regular Mississippi driver's license and you want a Class D Commer SILE license, you must take and pass the computer examination. 
Take and pass the vision examination. Pay the required fee. Take and pass the driving exam. A learner's permit can only be used for driving with a licensed driver. Out-of-state permits are not honored. On your driver's license examination, you will be given a computerized test comprised of 20, 20 multiple-choice questions. The following questions are intended as a guide to help you in preparing for the examination. These are examples only and do not appear in any order of importance. The questions below do not reflect the entire test. Study this complete manual to prepare for the exam. What should you do when a law enforcement officer is directing traffic? What is the best way to inform other drivers of your intention to turn or change lanes to pass? What should you do if you notice a dangerous situation, such as a stranded car or broken crossing signal, at a railroad crossing? What steps should you take to make a left turn at an intersection? A right turn? Where do most accidents occur? What should you do if you take the wrong exit on? The interstate? What should you do if your vehicle has a blowout? What minimum amount of automobile liability insurance is required in Mississippi? When parallel parking downhill, which direction should you turn your wheels before setting the parking brake? On a two-way, four-lane street, which lane should? You used to make a left turn? What does a flashing yellow arrow mean? When are paved roads likely to be their slickest? If you are traveling in the right lane of an interstate highway, what adjustments should you make when other vehicles are entering the highway? What does overdriving your headlights mean? What strategies should drivers follow when travel ING long distances? When you overtake another vehicle at night, why should you use your low beams? What should you do if you are being overtaken by an emergency vehicle, fire truck, police car, ambulance, flashing its emergency lights? What should you do if the emergency vehicle is parked on the shoulder with its emergency lights flashing? Why should you use your turn signals well in advance of a turn? How far in advance should you signal? When exiting from the interstate, where should you begin slowing down? What should you do before backing out of a Diego NAL parking space? What should you do if your vehicle becomes stranded on a railroad track? Why are rear-end collisions so common on interstate highways? At an intersection, when must you determine right-of-way? When may you drive at the posted speed limits in Mississippi? Why shouldn't you drive when you are ill, angry, or depressed? What is the legal maximum distance at which you may park your car parallel to the curb? What does a flashing yellow traffic signal mean? What are the penalties for first offense DUI? What are the penalties for first offense zero toller and DUI? What blood alcohol content range falls under zero tolerance for drivers under the age of 21, 21? If a driver encounters a pedestrian crossing an intersection in an unmarked crosswalk, who has the right of way? If you approach a school bus that is loading or unloading school children, what should you do? If you are driving slower than other traffic on an interstate, which lane should you use? What is the first step you should take before back ING any vehicle? What is a traffic lane? If you are involved in an accident, what information should you give the other drivers involved? What direction does traffic always follow in a roundabout or traffic circle? What does a flashing light or a ringing bell at a railroad crossing signify? As a general rule, what is the safest thing to do if your vehicle goes into a skid? When is it acceptable to drive with your lights on? High beam? What headlight beam should you use when driving at night in a heavy fog? What lane markings indicate that passing is permit? When entering an interstate highway from the AC acceleration lane, how fast should you go? Which vehicle has right-of-way at an intersection? When is a right turn permitted at a red traffic signal? If your vehicle has become disabled on an interstate, what is the proper way to signal other motorists? That you need assistance? Mississippi law requires children at what age to be secured in a child safety seat. 
At what age, height, and weight must a child be southeast, cured in a booster seat, belt positioning booster seat system, when traveling in a vehicle? Under the informed consent law, what is the penalty for refusing to submit to a chemical or breath test? What does a flashing red light at an intersection in? Dicate? Before making a turn at an intersection, you should give a signal for at least how many feet. When meeting a car at night with blinding lights, what is the safest thing to do? When nearing an intersection marked with a yield right-of-way sign, what must you do? What steps should a driver take to safely pass an other vehicle on a two-lane highway? What is the most dangerous place on a highway? Why should you be especially careful when driving near a pedestrian who uses a white cane or a white cane with a red tip? What is a driver's responsibility when driving through an area where children are playing? What does a double solid white line indicate? When meeting or following a vehicle at night, how many feet away should you dim your headlights? When two vehicles enter or approach an intersect tie-in at approximately the same time and there are no traffic signs or signals, who has the right of way? What is the maximum speed limit for cars and trucks on two-lane highways in Mississippi? What are the maximum and minimum speeds on? Interstates in Mississippi? The examples below show the types of additional information included on the computerized exam for the Class D commercial license. The questions below do not appear in any order of importance, and they do not reflect the entire test. Study this complete manual to prepare for the exam. No vehicle unloaded or with load shall exceed a height of how many feet? Every motor vehicle which is so constructed or loaded as to obstruct the driver's view to the rear shall be equipped with a side mirror located to give a view of the highway for at least how many feet. Any vehicle loaded to within less than 6, 6, inches to top of body with sand, dirt, gravel, or rock shall not be driven or moved upon any highway unless it is equipped how? When your vision is limited due to bad weather conditions, what is the maximum speed on all highways for trucks, truck trailers, and buses? No semi-trailer operating in a truck tractor, semi-trailer combination, and no trailer drawn by a motor vehicle shall exceed what length? No semi-trailer or trailer operating in a truck tractor semi-trailer trailer combination and no trailer operating in a double trailer combination drawn by a motor vehicle shall exceed what length. How many vehicles in combination may be towed by saddle mount? How many motor vehicles may be towed by a tow bar? Trucks must stop at all way stations on the main highways for what reason? No single vehicle unloaded or loaded shall have an overall length, including front and rear bump airs, of how many feet? If a vehicle that is over 12 and one half, 12 one half, feet in height does damage to any overhead structure or wire that is at least 12 and one half, 12 and a half, feet high, who is liable for damages? Permits to move a vehicle or load that is in excess of the legal size or weight must be obtained from whom? If a truck or bus becomes disabled on the road, way at night, three, three, flares or reflectors must be placed to warn other drivers. One is placed alongside the vehicle. Where are the other two? Two, placed? All clearance side marker lamps on or near the front of a trailer must be what color? All reflectors mounted on the rear and on the side nearest the rear must be what color? Every vehicle transporting explosives must be equipped with fire extinguishers filled and ready for immediate use. At least how many are required? All trucks must have a red or amber stop light. And shall be lighted when? The load upon any vehicle or combination of vehicles shall not extend beyond the front bumper of such vehicles more than how many feet. Before backing a large truck, what is the first step? You should take? The total outside width of any vehicle or load shall not exceed how many feet. The transplantation of human organs is often the only therapy for people whose organs have failed. Organ transplants save thousands of lives each year. In addition, the donation of tissues such as CORNEAs, skin, and bone can enhance the lives of those with a variety of injuries and impairments. However, the U.S. faces a serious shortage of organ and tissue donors. According to the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, 
an average of 22, 22, people die each day waiting on a transplant. Anyone can donate, regardless of age, race, or gender. Your medical condition at the time of your death will determine what organs and tissues can be donated. If you are not a registered organ donor at your time of death, your legal next of kin must give consent for organ donation. Mississippi's Gift of Life Act, 1998, requires that all families be given the opt-in to donate organs and tissue at the time of death. The Mississippi Department of Public Safety provides information about organ donation at each driver license test site. Please learn all you can about organ donation and have a conversation with your family about your wishes. The quality of hospital treatment and life-saving efforts will not be lessened if you choose to donate. Only after all efforts to save your life have been exhausted and the physician has declared death will donation be considered and transplant professionals become involved. Your family is not responsible for any donation costs. However, you are responsible for hospital X pences up until the time of death, even when consent is given for donation. Organ and tissue donation will not affect funeral plans. Organ recovery takes place in a sterile OPER aiding room under the direction of skilled surgeons. Families can proceed with any type of funeral or burial arrangements, including an open casket funeral. Funeral expenses are also the responsibility of the family or the estate. All major religions support donation as a final, charitable act of giving to others. Organ donation and transplant is consistent with the life-preserving traditions of these faiths. The Natchez Trace Parkway is administered by the National Park Service of the United States Department of the Interior. It stretches 450, 450 miles from Natchez, Mississippi, to a point near Nashville, Tennessee. Mississippi's section is 350, 350 miles long. The parkway commemorates the Natchez Trace, a frontier road, prominent in the development of the Old Southwest. An elongated park, including a high-quality roadway, the right-of-way, averages 100. 100 acres for each mile of roadway. The parkway runs from 4 to 700, 400 to 700, feet in width, and is widest at historical, scientific, and recreational areas. As a traveler along the trace, you will find nearby Native American sites and settings relating to the history of the original road. Commercial vehicles are excluded from the parkway, and access is limited. Crossroads separated by grades, long curves, good sight lines, good slight grades, all combine to protect the motorist driving along the trace. The parkway is protected and patrolled by National Park Rangers, who are ready to assist you and have ING a safe and enjoyable trip. Report all accidents, fires, or other emergencies to the nearest ranger. Natchez Park members are listed in local telephone directories under U.S. government. If you cannot locate the number and need assistance, dial 0 for the operator and ask to be connect ed to the nearest Natchez Trace Park Ranger. Be sure to give your approximate location and to describe the circumstances. Federal regulations govern vehicle traffic and public use of parkway facilities. State traffic laws also apply. The maximum speed for travel on the parkway is 50, 50 mph, except where lower speeds are posted. Radar is used for your protection. The superintendent of the Natchez Trace Parkway is in immediate charge of all facilities. For added tie information, you may contact this person at P.O. Box 948 Tupelo, Mississippi 38801 6018421572 This is your parkway. It exists for you and for all generations to come. Heed all posted signs. Do not hunt or use firearms on parkway lands. Extinguish all lighted cigarettes, cigars, and matches, and never er, throw them or other debris from moving vehicles. If you have any doubts about any regulation governing use of the parkway, do not hesitate to contact a park ranger. Remember that if you violate any laws while on the roadway or while using any of the parkway's facilities, you will be tried in federal court. 
Passenger automobiles consume about 14% of all the energy and about 31% of all the petroleum used in the United States. If the fuel consumption of the average car were reduced just 15% through better planning of car use, better driving practices, and better maintenance, the nation's consumption of petroleum would fall by over 28 million gallons per day. Such savings of daily fuel consumption would significantly stretch current fuel supplies, save money, and lessen pollution. Energy Saving Suggestions Drive at moderate speeds As your speed increases so does your car's wind resistance, a big factor in gasoline mileage. Most automobiles get about 28% more miles per gallon on the highway at 50, 50 mph than at 70, 70 mph and about 21% more at 55, 55 mph than at 70, 70 mph. Avoid unnecessary braking and anticipate the traffic ahead. When the traffic light far ahead turns red, take your foot off the accelerator immediately. The light may turn green again by the time you reach the intersection. If not, there's still a fuel saving. There is then less energy to be dissipated in braking. Don't tailgate. This necessitates additional braking too. Start slowly. Accelerate gently except when entering high-speed traffic lanes or when passing. Hot rod driving and jerky acceleration can increase fuel consumption by 2, 2 miles per gallon in city traffic. Drive at steady speeds. Hold a steady foot on the accelerator if traffic conditions permit. On the highway, seesawing or repeatedly varying the speed by 5, 5 mph can reduce gas mileage by up to 1.3 miles per gallon. Save gas when changing gears. If you drive a car with a manual transmission, run through the lower gears gently and quickly for minimum gasoline consumption. Then build up speed in high gear. If you drive a car with an automatic transmission, apply enough gas pedal pressure to get the car rolling, then let up slightly on the pedal to ease the automatic transmission into high range as quickly as possibly. More gas is consumed in lower gears. Avoid unnecessary use of air conditioning. Using the air conditioner reduces fuel economy by up to 2.5 miles per gallon. Avoid excessive idling. The average American car consumes a cup of gasoline every six minutes when idling. When you stop the car, don't idle the engine for more than a minute. If you are waiting for someone, turn off the engine. It takes less gasoline to restart the car than it does to idle it. Break gas wasting habits. For instance, don't pump the accelerator or race the engine when your car isn't in motion. Use the brake pedal rather than the accelerator to hold your car in place on a hill. Consolidate your driving. Combine short shopping and commuting trips to reduce the miles traveled for each action. Patronize shops in your immediate area as much as possible to reduce mileage. Join a carpool for coming to and from work. Carpooling saves fuel and money. Select your new car wisely. Study the fuel economy figures carefully. Purchase only the options and accessories you really need. Take good care of your car. Proper engine tune, tire pressure, and wheel alignment will give you better mileage. Radial tires and high-quality motor oil also boost mileage.